Oh my god. Oh. Whoa. Are they Man. in a plane? That's crazy. I don't even know if I in that moment could have thought about running. I don't I know. I would be so scared. Everybody Everyone. and welcome back. Welcome back to part two of the Maravi documentary. We will go straight Ready into this video. That's a mosquito. <laughs> Let's get right into, into it. it. Was a video uploaded by Rappler YouTube channel. We don't own the footage of this video. Uh, all the credits. To Rappler, we're gonna link the original video and the channel in the description down below. Go yes. there, check it out, yes. and make sure you're watching to the end because we read two comments of the day. And let's, let's get into, get into it into part right two. now. Isa, Dalawa, Dalawa, Tatlo, Tatlo, Maxi Mula, Maxi Mula, <laughs> Natayo. The ground commander in Marawi is his classmate in military school. Major General Rolly Bautista also came from Basilan. Oh my god, is that real? Oh my god. They're in the middle of the battle. How did they record this oh in the middle of god. the battle? Like, Imagine, was there like a camera man? Yeah, or? I believe that every every operation of those they have like people with with set up cameras you know like they oh, are ba they're okay. battling but they have gopros and this oh, and that okay. you know yeah maybe they are live streaming ah, okay. to a commander that is not there maybe i don't know maybe they they're keep also the yeah, yeah live streaming maybe yeah. and then maybe they're also learning in the future from yeah. this and they're re-watching it re-watching yeah. to see if they could caught the face of someone yeah they're looking true, for true you're right yeah okay Look this footage. Oh, oh my it's god, it's a hole from a building. From a building. Jesus. This is how the war is fought here in Marawi City. It is urban warfare. The main battle area is about 200 meters away. The Marines here, who are used to fighting in the jungles, often. Okay. The TV, she's, the TV, she, she, she's the in, the middle, is in the middle, in the middle of the battle, like 200 oh meters away, and, and you can hear everything yes. happening. Whoa. That's right when the battle was happening, and she's inside there. That is insane. Oh my god, she is also Pretty risking tough. her life. Yeah, Seriously, she's tough. Whoa. Occupy tall buildings and snipers here bore a hole on the wall so they could have a view of the main battle area. Gentlemen, kung nakikita nyo ang hirap na sundalo, mm. pag clear nyo lang ano, nang pababa, sa baba, buhos, minamaso nyo yan, yung uh, kabilang dinding, dahil pagka, pagka kumaliwa ka ng kanan, nado ng sniper. So ang ginagawa natin, binabutas natin yung dinding. Ganun ang ano, ganun ang ano, ganun ang kahirap. Yung dalawang ano, dalawang building, dalawang araw din namin pinubutan. Two buildings. Ang dami namin namamatay sa pagbutas lang isang building. We're looking at the 105mm cannon of the Philippine Army. We are 200 to 300 meters away from the position of the enemies. It's the final push to end the war in Marawi. And from here, we can already see the tallest building in the battle area, the CND center point, where one of the officers of the army was killed. The Philippine military fought urban warfare in Zamboanga City in 2013. But Marawi is so much worse. Army. Air Force. Navy. Combine forces in the biggest, longest, and bloodiest operation of the Philippine military since World War II. Since World War II. Allies come to help. US, Australia, fly surveillance planes to help locate the enemy. China sends rifles. The mission is complex. Neutralize the terrorists while making sure the hostages are safe. 
the military resorts to airstrikes, horrifying residents like Normira Pangarungan who fear bombs will destroy their homes or kill loved ones still trapped in the battle zone. Oh my God. Sing mag bomba bomba sila. Mas lalo ngayon. Paano sila? Kung may natira pang isang dalawa tatlo, patay na. Yun ang problema ko man. Kahit nandito ako na para nang muna ko. Gusto ko pa pumasok ko. Alang alang sa pito. Kahit hindi pwede na kasi mga kuman yung mga kapatid ko. Yun ang pangan eh. Weeks later, she is reunited with her family, Aww. but her nightmare is all too real to the military. At least twice, bombs accidentally hit troops. The Marawi War forces young officers to grow old beyond their years. Billy Kojam left military school only three years ago. In June, his company was pulled out of Basilan to join the fighting here. Oh, he's a scout ranger. Yeah. He's a scout ranger. Stuff. Experience sa urban warfare. Ano ba yung pinakamahirap sa urban warfare? Sa urban warfare is sniping mo. Tapos yung labasan nila yung bahay mo maggumawa ng butas. Abangan yung butas nila mam tapos pag pumasok yung tropa doon na nila puputukan mam He won't forget his first battle in Marawi The mission clear this green building that serve as an enemy stronghold as shown in videos recovered from the enemy Nung unang atin kasi namin mam is meron pala dyan mam sa likod nakapesto yung kalaban nakilintay lang kami dumikit mam din Oh, uh, firefight talaga mam. Yung nangyari, hindi lang sniping mam. Tapos, explosions din sa from uh, M203 ng kalaban yung ibang naka-wounded sa uh, tropa namin mam. Colonel Mon Almodovar is called Jam's Battalion Commander. Nung mga first uh, days kasi, a few days, very strong pa yung defensive pa ng kalaban. And we, ang nasa-in sa amin, si clear yung dalawang building na matataas doon sa harap yung pagpasok mo dito yung nasunog na building na kulay green yung roof dito ma'am, naipit kami dito ma'am sa first floor, pagpasok namin sa first floor ma'am is may kalaban na pala sa second floor at saka third floor ma'am no. napasok lang kami sa first floor hindi na kami maka-strict ang last option ng mga nilabat ko at saka yung company commander ko ma'am is Putukan yung second floor at saka third floor habang nag-extricate kami ma'am. Pinasok yung dalawang tanke. Dumikit kami dun sa tanke ma'am. Then dahan-dahan kami ng matras ma'am. It will take them four attempts in a span of three days to take the building. Ang tropa namin, kabalik-balik lang. Sige, wounded, balik ulit. One soldier is killed. Tiring, tiring. Final push. Troops push on and learn new tactics along the way, but so do the enemy. The mosques make good hiding places. Oh, the mosques. We're limited to ano to strike the mga mosques or kanyo ni natin bombahin natin yung mga mosques because of ay nga yung ating cultural sensitivities and respect for religion. Sit na sit parin sila jan sa ilalim ng mosque sa basements nya. They also bore holes and dig tunnels. The military can found buildings with airstrikes, but enemies can move from one building to another using these. So they were My boring God. holes they was, So they in were the already building. preparing it way before yeah, they everything it, it happened. That is crazy, guys. That is crazy. I don't know what wow. to say about it. It's And um, what, what, what the young soul, what, well, he was a scout ranger, what the scout ranger meant with um, urban warfare, is um, that it's happening in a city, in right? City, because yeah, it's yeah. like urban. It's happening in the city. Yeah, the it's not civilians. happening in the in you the know, jungle or on a field. It is in the city. I feel more upset about all the civilians that were trapped in the middle of this yeah. battle because they have nothing to do with it yeah. at all, yeah. and they're losing their houses and losing their families, and it is so sad to think that. Uh, you know, like yeah, the civilians like were trapped people, there, you know, innocent, innocent people, yeah. they were there in the middle of it. Yeah. It's unfair, it's just unfair. Eventually, when they were in the middle of it, they were in the middle of it. 
nagbukay na sila, nagpa-panel na sila. So, kumbaga nag-improve din yung kanilang mga tactics at saka mga techniques. So, kaya tayo, we have to adapt din sa kanila doon kung based din kung ano yung tactics ng kalaban. Oh, may tao sa likod ng 6 to 1, kabo. Next time. Dalawa, tatlo. Bilisan mo, singit ka muna. Tatlo. Ah, uh, they need a request. Apat. Oh, are they in a plane? Are they in a plane? I don't know. A new problem emerges as troops close in. Improvised explosive devices or IEDs. Tubok yung suspected nating IED. Hindi natin malaman kung anong klaseng ordnance item siya. Pero most probably, remote control siya uh, by cell phone. By cell phone. Yung mode of detonation niya is by cell phone. The battle area becomes even more complex. Troops need to move fast to evade enemy snipers, but not too fast or they will trip on these bombs. The death toll rises. Death is always there. Sa pagsundalo ka, nandiyan lang talaga. Yung isang pamo, lalo na pag nasa gyero ka, it's always nakabaw naka na yung isang pamo sa hukay. So expected na namin yan. So, however, we as leaders, we, we, we tried so hard para protectahan yung aming sundalo. Almodovar's 3rd Scout Ranger Battalion later plays a big role in ending the war. Peace process. Galing kami sa buteg, yung sa Kuan. Oo, matagal na yung mga uh, ilang buwan na yung ngayon. Lumikas na yung mga ISIS. Dito sila nag-transfer. Eh, sabi ko, bakit ganito na kahit saan pa yung pumunta na may ano? The war against ISIS-linked groups in the Philippines did not start in Marawi. It's in Butig, where the Maute brothers operated for years. It just so happened that the mother is from Butig. So, uh, napag-isipan nila itong ano, plano nila. Dito sila pumunta sa Butig. Nangyari lang siguro, I guess, na dahil malawak yung... Uh, Bundok namin, at saka medyo may kalungwa dito, dito sila nagtatago kasi ma medyo malayong abuti na militari. Butik is no ordinary town. It's host to one of the biggest camps of the Moro Islamic Liberation Front, the country's dominant Muslim rebel group. This is how the peace process is connected to the war in Marawi. The father of the Maute brothers was once a member of MILF. He and his sons rejected the political solution the group espouses, the creation of a new Bangsamoro region that will give Muslims wider powers over their land. The Maute's prefer the radical ideology of ISIS and decide to carve their own territory. MILF Peace Panel Chairman Mohagher Iqbal says they work to counter the spread of ISIS ideology. Only the factor of the MILF is preventing the multi group to recruit uh, so many people to their side. But delays in the peace process erodes the MILF's influence, especially among the young. The leadership of the MILF uh, belongs to the first generation of leaders, and they are, are, they are advocating for the political resolution of the conflict in Mindanao, which government has not yet complied fully, especially the passage of the BBL. So in terms of... Uh, uh, moral ascendancy, I think uh, the Modi group is taking something from the moral ascendancy of the Amali. It's become a battle for legitimacy. In 2016, the town that enjoyed relative peace since the MILF embraced the peace process becomes a battle zone once again. Oh no. It was in 2016. So this town you know? had already like a battle in 2016 yeah. and now again in 2017, like a year later. We're here at the Municipal Hall of Batig Town in Lanao del Sur. Last week, the Maute group occupied this abandoned municipal building and for the first time raised the black flag of the ISIS. Hapilon joins the Maute brothers in Butig. They receive funding from ISIS. 
foreign fighters also come to help. Clashes move to Piagapo in April and then Marawi in May. Life goes on. The wedding of Norin Shah Bashir and Jomar Saumai lifts the spirits of the evacuees at the tent city in the town of Pantar. Sana mais na mais na Marawi para makabalik na kami doon. Marawi resident. Life goes on despite the difficult situation in evacuation centers. Uh, must be crazy. But it's a long wait for the war to that end. It's really sad. Oh, look so cute. Look. Inside the battle area, hostages learn to live with their captors. Lord Vin Acopio is tasked to tend to wounded Maute fighters. Dr. Oma, I don't know if I'm going to get and, and he's, he's telling just laughing. the story and now laughing. and oh laughing. He was one of the hostages. We there saw was, that in part one. was the hostages and he was taking care of the opposite yeah, soldiers, exactly. you know? And they thought that he was a doctor, but he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> but see, this is how Filipinos, oh this is how Filipinos deal with their hardships, you know? They kind of like, they just, you know, he was just laughing it yeah. away, even he was, he's still so traumatized and hurt, yeah, you know? Sure. In part one, when he was talking about the other experience, he was yeah, very, even very he's saying sad. saying right now, like, that they, they probably didn't sleep for yeah. three days because there were so many patients yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. monitor Matutulog ka na sana, sabihin niya kakain ako, ganyan. So alas 3 days mo parang lasing ka or nakadrugs ka na hindi mo alam. Bombs are dropping everywhere. Respect on the Can't stop thinking about the civilians living there. It's not fair. Kasi wala din magagawa kung binubumba kayo dyan, tatakbo ka sa labas. Ano nun, di ba? Baka barilin ka din nila kasi akala nila tatakbo ka hindi yung intention mo sana umiwas ka ng bomba baka sa isip nila tatakas ka One day Omar Maute finds him crying Sabi niya um, Omar gawin mo na lang tong trabaho na to yung parang humanitarian na ano ba dahil kapwa mo sila tao o mong gawin to dahil captors or terrorists he meets Hapilon himself. Oh my god. Sabay kami nagdasal eh, nakakatakot yung syempre yung alam mo. Yung mood nila doon parang... Very serious. Ano, parang mga seryoso, mga ganon. Uh -uh. Pero hindi ko pa doon siya na-recognize na si IH yun. Kasi lately ko lang niya na-recognize nung nakita ko na yung mga <gasps> news. They learn to pray like Muslims, but all the while they plan their escape. Pero before that, may mga plans na talaga kami ni Father. Inihintay lang namin na medyo malapit lang yung operatives. Kasi mahirap naman na tumakbo ka dyan or tumakas ka na andun pa pala sa milya-milya yung layo ng mga sundalo. That must be so hard for him to deal with this experience, you know, and trauma because the whole time he was there, and they could have just about, killed yeah, him and, and he knew that, running, you know. You know? Whoa, uh, crazy. I don't even know if I in that moment could have thought about running. I, don't I would know. be so scared. I have no idea. We're only about 400 meters away from Bato Mox, where troops had an intense firefight with the enemies. They overwhelmed them and were able to rescue Father Chito Sugano. Oh, wow. Oh, oh wow. 117 him. days in captivity, they are free. Pray for me for trauma healing recovery. Thank you very much. God and he's you. smiling already. He just got rescued from this traumatizing experience and he's already smiling. And you're saying, please pray for my recovery. Oh. 117 days. The war ends. Sorry, guys, if we moved the camera, but <laughs> our battery just, just ran out. Just ran out. <laughs> the war ends. Troops push forward day by day. The last of the enemy strongholds fall one by one. 
Isnilon Hapilon and the Mautes put up a damned good fight. But on October 16, 2017, they meet their end oh my God. in God! Oh an assault that's him. that Colonel oh Almodovar leads. A bullet to Hapilon's chest. Another bullet to Omar Mauta's head oh my God. put an end to their reign okay, of terror. Okay. Oh. I am confirming that the taunted emir of ISIS in the Philippines and Abu Sayyaf leader is Nilo Napilon and the last of the dreaded Mauta brothers, Omar, Omar Kayam, are both dead. Oh. My God. That's so sad. Look oh, at that building. It's destroyed. Oh, it's completely destroyed. It's, That's a, it's so a war sad. Zone. It was a war zone. So sad. Everything. No, I'm speechless. This is what's heartbreaking going inside the battle area. We see how houses are destroyed, yeah. and we're seeing human skeletons among the debris. Still to be retrieved from the battle area. Oh my god. god. Skeletons. The crisis ah. is not over. Beyond rebuilding homes and burying bodies claimed by the longest war since World War II is an urgent cry to address the root cause of conflict. Yeah. Ah. There are boiling issues to resolve to prevent Marawi from happening again here or elsewhere. Or elsewhere. Yeah. Carmela von Buena, Rappler. Wow. Wow. Well, I got goosebumps even to this journalist, seriously, Guys, because she was in the battlefield. What a documentary. You know, with the camera team. I mean, wow, respect to you guys. Yeah, what a documentary. On Rappler, wow. Wow. Honestly. Guys, we got a link again. We got a link, Rappler YouTube channel and the social media in the description down below. Uh, make sure you go there and give your support because it's a big production and, and, and she was there, right? And by the way, she just so you guys know, you were also uh, requesting another documentary but it actually has been deleted on YouTube so we could not react on that. Okay guys, let's dive straight into the two comments of the day. I'm just speechless about this video. Documentary. Yeah, video documentary. Um, it really did wow. seriously open my eyes and I'm really glad that we watched this documentary because um, now we know yeah. you know how it happened i'm curious to see how maravi is today how they yeah. are dealing and how yeah. they are rebuilding everything because yeah, it was yeah, only yeah. three years ago yeah yeah you exactly know, it didn't yeah, i would like to see that too that long ago and yeah. it was a big war wow the first comment of the day came from a uh, seer 21 medzam our gratitude and salute to out to our heroes special forces for making maravi back in peace it was very unforgettable experience back then. And thanks God, before the war began, I already was at our hometown. But eventually praying for peace at the same time. For us to continue chasing our dream there. Hashtag survivor. Hashtag proud MSUN. Maravi main branch. Hashtag 2017 Maravi Sige. Wow. Oh, siege. Siege? Sige? Siege. I'm not sure how. Siege. Okay. Siege. That's very heartbreaking. Wow, that's really hard, I'm yeah. really, really sorry, honestly. That's, but I'm glad that yeah. now everything is getting back to normal. You know, everybody's safe and rebuilding, and it's a new start, I would say. The second comment of today came from Mark Mabs. Hashtag happy reaction subscribers. Hashtag Mabu freaking hi. Hashtag Vanessa and Fernando keep safe. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. Shout out please in the next video. I'm a new subscriber and I love your video for supporting our country and appreciate our country, the Philippines. Thank you. We appreciate. Maraming salamat po, Mark. Thank you so much for your beautiful comment. Thank you. And thank you. Lot all of you for watching this video please share this video with your friends and family people that should be aware of what happened in Marawi yeah or someone that could use a smile today thank you guys thank for you watching. for watching and we see you guys in the next one mahal na min kayo and pa stay safe mabu freaking high everyone we love you Like no other every day I won't stop like the others